Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be knocking a game engine off the list of probably the most commercially successful game engine I have yet to cover on this channel, and that is called RenPy. Now, this one kind of flies a little bit under my radar because it's in a genre that I'm not really that interested in, but if you go ahead and check out earlier, uh, August 16th on Game From Scratch, I did a video about the top selling games on Steam, the top um, used game engines for creating games on Steam, that is, and you'll notice if you look at the list from the SteamDB results, one, two, three, four, five down, you have RenPy. And that is the topic for today. RenPy is, as you can tell by the last part of the name, Python. The first part of the name, something else. Uh, so this is, if you go to, say, Steam, and you go to, say, Categories, you'll find a category called Visual Novels. You'll also find a category called Anime. And there is a lot of overlap between Anime and visual novels. Now, if they were honest about things, if there was another category here called porn, uh, it would also have a hell of a lot of overlap here. So there's a lot of games out there along the lines of, let's say, dating simulators. Um, and then we got some more adult dating simulators here. Uh, so as you can see by the breakdown, we do have a category here called sexual content. And uh, a lot of those games are having made with something either called RenPy or Kirikiri. And today, we're talking about RenPy. So these games, they sell well. There's a lot of them out there. And you may notice from the thumbnail, I actually took it from something called the Doki Doki Literature Club. And that's uh, it's an interesting title. I, I'll tell you that. If you want to get your uh, ex expectations um, subverted, go check out the uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. It's uh, it's an interesting title. So anyways, uh, here we are. This is RenPy. RenPy is available at RenPy.org. It is completely and utterly free. It is available for the major platforms out there. You can grab it for uh, Windows, which comes as an executable zip extracting. Uh, we got a DMG file for Mac OS, and we have a Tarby Z2 for the Linux peoples. Uh, we head on over to extract it, and you get this SDK out. And at the root, you get a number of executables. So generally, what you want to run is renpy.py, renpy.shell, and in my case, renpy.exe. It all depends on which platform you are on. If you run that tool, you get this. This is the primary launcher. You can think of this as the scaffolding that holds everything together. And you're going to notice you got a couple of different projects here that it comes with out of the box, or you can go ahead and create your own new project like so. So I'm going to turn my music on, which I'm going to regret. I'm going to go ahead and go to the question. And now what we are going to do is launch this project. So this actually builds the, the project out for you. And here you can see the kind of games that you can create using RenPy. So it's a visual experience. You do have options. So you got um, uh, loading screens, switch between various different options and controls. So you do have uh, quite a bit of power available. You can do about screens and so on. And we're just going to go ahead and start. All right, so here you can see the game, and it's one of those, you click a lot. That's what visual novels are like to me. You click a lot, then you get an option, and then you click a lot more, like so, and you click a lot, and you get some more options. You get transitions, fades, and you do a lot more reading, and a lot more clicking. There we go. Okay, so that's basically how much I enjoy the visual novel experience, but that is in a full titled game. And now let's go take a look at how it works. So basically, if you've ever read like a choose your own adventure, visual novels are basically multimedia versions of that. Now the nice thing here is you can actually make things more complicated. So you could go ahead and add in things like um, uh, variables. So you could have hit points and, and that kind of stuff. So you can create RPG type systems. You could create like, like a, the fighting dungeon type games if you wanted to using this. And here you see a number of different scripts in action here. Now, the first time you go ahead and run one of these scripts, it's their own um, scripting language, RPY, or, or it's actually RenPy uh, language. Uh, it's the simple markup language, and they'll ask you for an editor. If you've got your own editor with an extension, you can pick it. Otherwise, you can do Atom or JEdit. It will automatically download it for you. I'll, I'll go ahead and open the entire project up so you can see what we're dealing with here. And here we go. So let's go here and open up script. So all of the stuff that we're looking at, so you see your uh, GUI images and so on are all available down here. You'll also notice you can get to those um, from the launcher over here. So if you want to go to where the images are and click here, and you can see we got some transparent sprites for the foreground, and then we have some BG, lecture hall, club, etc., for the backgrounds that were used to create this game. Um, so all of those directories are available right here as well. Same with the GUI. Uh, all the, the things need to make the buttons and so on are all available here as well. So let's go back over to our editor. So you see here, the script language is really, really simple. It's 
um, label based, so you're jumping from place to place. You can do simple characters. So you're creating characters here. So you're creating a character called Sylvie and a character called me with different uh, colors available for their, their typing or their text in the world. Uh, you can create variables. Uh, so here you can see a book variable uh, defined. You can also drop into and actually directly call Python for more complex stuff. And you can see the game starts here at the start label. Uh, and you hear really, really kind of simple. Let's play a music file. So we play the uh, Ill You Rock uh, Opus file in the background. Uh, we fade, uh, we draw the uh, BG lecture hall with a fade effect. Uh, then we have the text. Each line of this text displays, and then we go to a different scene, then a fade, and then we show a character. So this is gonna draw over top of the background, and then a dissolve. And then we've got a menu asking us what we want to do. So as uh, I decide, da da da, and then the two options that are available to ask her right away or to ask her later. If you pick right away, you jump to the right away label. Otherwise, you jump to the later. La so let's say we did right away. So here we are in right away, and we show her in the smiling version. And then more text to click through. Uh, change the scene with a fade effect. More text to click through. Fade again. Say it again. So it's, it's kind of how you switch between the different frames of animation. And then again, we have another um, option here. And then you jump between the things. Uh, so it just kind of keeps going like so. I, there is a point here where they call into uh, Python, I think. Oh, maybe not. But if we go into the GUI, which controls the UI aspect of things, you're going to notice here, uh, straight out Python calling. So you do have the ability to drop in and call Python code directly if you wish. And that's where a whole lot of this stuff comes from. This is this is Python code as opposed to um, RenPy code. It's one of those things to be aware of. So that is the uh, structure of your game. It's pretty straightforward scripting language on the whole. It is all held together by this RenPy launcher. Uh, when you're happy with your project, again, you can run it this way uh, or you can build it for Android. Um, iOS. Also, you can make web versions of it as well. Um, so all of the build tools are in here as well. There's also some tools in here for creating uh, different versions. So you can create um, internationalization versions. It's got tools in place for that. So if you want to port it to, um, you know, Spanish or French or whatever, uh, you do have those options available right there. Uh, you can change the GUI uh, here. Uh, you can lint through your scripts. And that's kind of it. That's RenPy. So you've got this kind of simple scripting language, their, their own RPY uh, built on top of it. You have Python behind the scenes. And if you really want, this is an entirely open source project. Oops, I'm on the wrong window. All right, here we go. So back here to it, uh, there is entirely up on GitHub, the source code. Uh, so you can uh, change things however you wish. You'll notice here, it is quite actively updated. Uh, there are a number of contributors working on this. This is a very successful open source project for sure. Uh, so that is uh, pretty cool. Uh, you're going to notice here in terms of what it's written in, uh, it is actually a lot of it is actually in RenPy's language. And that's the interesting thing to note here. RenPy is successful enough to the point where it is a GitHub language. So you can actually go on GitHub and search and filter by RenPy source files. So, uh, but mostly written in Python in terms of like the backend code uh, or Cython. I'm not sure why the heuristics are finding difference between these two, but it's picking up 3.6% assembly, which I think is a crock. A little bit of C in there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So most of this stuff is probably just misidentification. So it's a primarily Python and their own language uh, project. Uh, and yeah, in terms of the license, it's not shown here, uh, but it is under the MIT license. The one thing to be aware of, it does use a lot of open source projects, especially uh, LGPL, which has some uh, encumbrances. So it is set up in such a way as to be compliant with those. Uh, but the, uh, the core of RenPy itself is under the MIT license. The MIT license is a very permissive license. Just do be keeping in mind, if you modify it, uh, you're still held by these licensing terms. So you're gonna have to, uh, do the same attribution that RenPy does in this particular case. So just one of those things to be aware of. Uh, it is well documented. Uh, so you can see here, it's also available. Uh, I believe Japanese documentation is available there. Uh, Chinese documentation is available. Uh, so something to be aware of. Uh, it walks you through everything you need to know. So drawing a character on screen, transitioning, and so on. Uh, if you want to get into uh, more complex stuff, you can use flags uh, and supports. Uh, so RenPy supports Python 2.7. Uh, so 
just one of those things to be aware of on the back end. So you can do some um, definitely more complex logic. You just, you'll see some uh, RenPy games exist that aren't just, you know, choose your own adventure branching story arcs. You can actually have variables and have it go on, um, you know, based off how those variables go. So you could have like, again, time of day or the character's health, that kind of stuff. There's There are advanced options out there, something to be aware of. And then you got details here on how you can uh, set up and customize the GUI to your liking and so on. But for the most part, it's a pretty straightforward project on the whole. And again, it's uh, it's very successful. So I, I figured I should definitely uh, cover it on this channel. I'm also going to look into Kiri Kiri a little bit more. Uh, that's more aimed at the Japanese market, and it's not really that focused on the Western market. So I'm going to see if it's not if it's not useful to English speakers, I won't cover it. Uh, but I might do a follow up on it if I find that it's well enough ported or documented that we can make sense of it. Uh, but Renpy, uh, yeah, thousand games up on Steam, and uh, some of them are quite successful. So uh, visual novels, if that's your jam, Renpy, open source, free, cross platform tool for making games. And the cool thing about Renpy, though, is it's one of those things. You don't need to be a programmer. You can pick up the basics in like uh, probably an hour or two, and you can create these visual novel style games. And if you're an artist and you want to showcase your work, especially, this is a really easy tool to do so. And uh, if you're a fan of a certain genre of games, well, a lot of your games were written uh, using this tool. So that is RenPy. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the visual novel jo um, genre in general. Uh, if you've got some high-end recommendations for people out there. And if you want something a little bit weird, check out Doki Doki. It's uh, interesting. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.